This is the daily video update for Thursday, February 11th, 2021, for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. I'm the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. I apologize about the huffing and puffing in the updates this week. We had a big storm here in Trident a couple days ago. Not actually that big for here, but uh, big for Nebraska. <laughs> and uh, I don't have snowshoes anymore. And so I am uh, trudging through this trail and remembering why just walking in deep snow is actually a pretty good workout. Anyway, as you can see, the lakes here are very frozen and very covered in snow. So this week we're going through and we're talking about some of the discussion questions captured in our Soul Matters material for February. And the question for discussion today is the following. It said that beloved community isn't about the absence of conflict, but the willingness to stay at the table and work through it. What has been your best strategy for staying at the table? What practice or wise words keep you from running or attacking when things get hard? I'm just going to pause for a minute here because this is some of the first blue sky we've seen here in Dryden for Oh, I don't know, a couple weeks. Probably had three or four days like this since we moved here. So what keeps us at the table? I mean, it's a tautology, I suppose, but what keeps me at the table is staying at the table. Sometimes through carefully thought out strategy, sometimes from pure bullheadedness. But the way you stay at the table is saying staying at the table is important and then figuring out the justification for it afterwards. But I suppose this question probably deserves a longer answer than that. So if we're organizing, if we're building something, if we're participating in the beloved community, if the subject of that organizing and building and participating is at all important in our lives, if it's something that we actually believe has deep worth and has multiple people involved in it, then there's just going to be conflict. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be times when we have multiple people with deeply held beliefs who disagree with each other. Because that's what happens when you have things that are important in people's lives and more than one person. So, a couple strategies for me when that gets hard and the question of whether or not to stay at the table becomes live. One of the best things that we can do that's really hard to do is name the conflict. It's to say, I think I disagree, and here's why. And that's not the end of the world, but we should be honest that we disagree, and here's the bounds of that disagreement. What that does is to name the dynamic going on at the table, but also to put some bounds around it. To say, I disagree about how we are approaching this particular vote, not who you are as a person. That's really important, both for the people hearing that explanation, but also for ourselves as we get upset and in conflict. Because often, what we're actually upset about is a vote, but unless we're careful, it can turn into anger at a person. 
<laughs> I'm gonna pause for a second. I don't know if this will turn out on the camera, but there's a flock of Canadian geese in a little bit of the pond over there that's melted. Oh, I really hope the camera caught that. Huh. If it did, oh, and there they go. That one's for you, Linda Brown, and for the Audubon Society, and for my dad. All right, where were we? Conflict. So we have this tendency to, to be angry about a vote, but then express that anger as disappointment in the person or unhappiness with the person. And, and what naming the conflict does is allows us to step back from that and set bounds for ourselves around what the conflict is. Easier said than done, I know. And the other thing that we can do in times of conflict is to take your my reaction to the conflict outside of the system that the conflict is happening in. So rather than blow up in a meeting, I can sign off of Zoom, clear an hour off my schedule, and go lift heavy things for a little while. Or I can debrief with people I know and love, family members, say, but also folks that I trust who are building beloved community, but who aren't in my exact system say, a trusted colleague in a different part of the country. And then there's one more piece of this. <laughs> there's one more piece of this as I've gone off of any part of the trail that's groomed. It looks like this. Um, so I'm actually going to turn around now because I don't think I can walk through this and Nope, I can't walk through this and talk at the same time. Okay. Snowshoes by next week. So there is another piece that happens. And, and this, for me, is a, is a harder component of conflict. Because there's this thing that happens in a lot of circles, but in, in UU circles in particular, where folks tell each other or simply imply that the other person that they're in conflict with is insufficiently committed to building beloved community or bringing justice into the world. And we might be about building beloved community in our churches and our congregations, but we can still be very cruel to each other sometimes. I've had folks tell me that in UU circles, and I've watched it happen any number of times. And so a big component of staying at the table, for me, is being grounded in who we are. To be able to say internally, that's sad that those comments were just directed at me, but I know my own soul and I sleep well at night. So I'm just gonna stay here because I know that my voice is important. Well, ultimately staying at the table sometimes means being able to differentiate yourself from the table. As always, if you have thoughts, leave them in comments on this YouTube video and we'll see you tomorrow.